Welcome back to the Ultra Reviewer once again. So before we get into today's video, I want to talk about KV Media. This is not just a YouTube channel, but also a registered business in Malaysia. For those of you guys who are not from my country, and what KV Media does is provide services such as video editing, photo shoot, designing posters, and anything media relevant stuff. You can find it at KV Media. I'll put a link under the description and other contact details. But an additional note is that I was in one of the latest videos. I'll also put a link to that video and I hope you guys watch it. So let's get into today's video. Now, talking about Shin Asoka, who's been around for 24 years. So for the first part, I want to talk about the character's development from the start of the series all the way to somewhere in the middle, which is probably after episode 15, which is the Ultraman Tia and Ultraman Dina movie. So Shin Asoka starts off as this new recruit in the Super Guts team. Now, the Super Guts team is a special task force in the series Ultraman Dina. And why is it so important to know this? Because previously, the special task force in the same universe was the Guts team in the Ultraman Tiga series. So for those of you guys who don't know yet, Ultraman Dina takes place in the same universe as Ultraman Tiga. So Ultraman Tiga was once in this world. So going into Ahsoka's introduction, now this is really important because by the time we get to the end of the second part, you will see how much this character has developed. So Shin Ahsoka, when we are introduced to this character, he registers to, to be recruited into the Super Guards team. And the officer recruiting him, which is Ryo, is pretty hesitant to take him in and for good reason because you can see from the first few minutes of the introduction of his character that he seems pretty full of himself. He's pretty arrogant and he doesn't need anyone's help and that day he's Mr. Amazing. But another thing to note is that Shin Asoka's father is pretty important. Now, in this character study video, I won't talk too much about Shin Asoka's father because there's, that would take up too much of time. But basically, his father went missing during one of his missions. Asoka's relationship to his father plays a pretty important role and it's continuously brought up in the series. So, despite this hard exterior that we see from Shin Asoka, there's a lot of softness in it as well. Another thing I want to emphasize is that up to that point, the whole Ultraman franchise, we never had a character like Asoka because every other human host we introduced to from all the Showa generation were all somewhat this good boy characters, you know, they were the boy scout, so to say. And Shin Asuka was the only one that wasn't like that. Now, as we get deeper and deeper into this video, we'll see why this kind of backfires on him. But essentially, what Suburaya did was introduce a totally reckless character into a very important role. And I think this is pretty cool because in the long run, it pays off. So when we start off in episode one, he actually almost dies. The series basically starts off like that with us being able to see why this character is very different. Now, just like every other Ultraman series, he becomes Ultraman in the very first episode. So there really isn't much to talk about there, about his character development. So I'll move on to episode three. Now, this is a pretty important part of his development as well, because what happens here is that Asoka's stubbornness and his disobedience causes his captain to nearly die. It is pretty vital and the fact that Asuka could see his captain get badly injured because of what he did kind of becomes the wake up call. Another thing I need to point out is that indirectly Asuka needed to give up a lot to the legacy of Tiga because when Ultraman Tiga was introduced, it was the first Ultraman in that universe and Tiga left his mark by being the Ultraman who stopped the darkness from destroying the world. It's a pretty big deal. Now, for someone as reckless and crazy as Asoka to live up to something like that, it's pretty crazy. 
but the world looked at Ultraman Daina at the time as the new Ika. And Asuka had no choice but to try to live up to those expectations. Now, let's come to Ultraman Tia and Ultraman Daina, the movie. This movie starts off with Asuka getting defeated in the very first fight. And he's saved by this machine called the Death Facer. And not long after that, it is revealed that the Death Facer is controlled by aliens. Yes, a human made machine that was controlled by aliens. And basically, Daina goes head to head with this machine. But because again, Ahsoka's headstrong, not thinking things through attitude, the robot knows all his moves because it downloaded it from Asuka's brain. So this defeat has the biggest consequence to Asuka period. Because what happens in that fight is the robot explodes the whole island that they are in. And in the process, mine gets very, very injured. Now, Asuka gets injured too, but isn't too bad. And when he goes to see my condition that she is, that becomes another wake up call. He looks for inspiration to Ajramantiga. And the person that he goes and attempts to find it for is Captain Iruma, who's the captain of the Guts team. So, Captain Iruma tells him that Ajraman Tiga didn't save the world on his own, that he had the light of many people, and that's how he was victorious. So, Asuka takes the inspiration and takes the advice close to his heart, goes off to fight that Facer again, and wins effortlessly. This moment alone already elevates Asuka's character tenfold because now he's not the I can do everything on my own attitude anymore. He's become a better character as a whole. But what happens after that fight is really important. He faces death. He dies. Because Shin Asuka is Ultraman Dina's human ghost, Ultraman Dina dies but not Asuka. And I know this can be pretty complicated. There are many videos that explain this but I will do one in the future for your convenience. Now, what happens after Dina dies is that Tiga gets revived with the help of the light of many other people and some of them who have been Tiga before, eight years ago at that time. But just like how Tiga was revived, there needs to be someone in Tiga, like a grown adult, which is Suburaya's way of kind of doing it. And Asoka basically becomes Tiga. So this is one of the reasons why Shin Asuka is such a unique character because in the history of Ultraman franchise, even up till today, there have been close to no human characters that have been more than one Ultraman. The only other character I can think of is Hikaru who plays the human ghost of Ultraman Ginga. And he too, coincidentally, the only other Ultraman he has ever been is Ultraman Tiga. The most important thing Asuka learns is the value of teamwork and all his battles in the future is not something that he needs to do on his own. So, in my personal opinion, this is the moment Shin Asoka truly became a hero at this point of his Ultraman career. Well, that's it from me today, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Leave comments, suggestions. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Watch out.